vehicles and commercial vehicle welcome mr pratap bosh for this session uh, i am dr ajay uh, head of the head of the department mechanical engineering at upes uh, before we actually discuss few things with uh, uh, mr pratap bosh because i know uh, he must be very eager to tell the uh, participants in the webinar the participants also must be very very eager to know things from him but before we actually uh, uh, start asking him a lot of things uh, i would like to uh, take you uh, briefly to uh, through the uh, things which we have at the university of petroleum and uh, energy studies uh, ups dehradun and department of mechanical engineering i would just like to brief you about what do we have in the department uh, before we discuss things with pratap i'll i'll take a uh, second to share my screen so a, a small brief about the uh, university of petroleum and energy studies dehradun uh, this uh, university started in year 2003 with programs in oil and uh, uh, gas uh, mba programs largely and then we kind of uh, diverged to uh, engineering programs in uh, petroleum upstream uh, downstream and then we also kind of started programs related to uh, energy transportation infrastructure and then accordingly we had programs in uh, uh, hardcore engineering uh, hardcore infrastructure related uh, areas and uh, many programs related to energy uh, in several departments we have uh, currently seven schools uh, like school of engineering school of computer science school of design school of uh, health sciences school of modern media school of uh, law school of business and these are all cutting edge uh, schools which has got uh, many flagship programs in the area of etir as i said uh, that is energy transportation and infrastructure uh mechanical engineering department uh, started in year 2005 and we started with a program called as automotive design engineering and this was a kind of uh, a niche program at that point of time in 2005 because a lot of r&d units were coming to india and a lot of uh, experimentation was being done with the design engineering program and uh, uh, we started with this very very innovative program where we had in the curriculum some elements related to designing we we had uh, the styling portion in that we had chassis component design engine component design and we we were also like uh, kind of a uh, uh, vehicle infotronics and uh, infotainment system uh, now also uh, we have done uh, great uh, enrichment in this program and we have brought in some very very cutting edge uh, uh, courses in this particular uh, program like if i have to mention a few uh, noise vibration and harmonics is one uh, vehicle integration we have also brought in in this particular course so this course is is a is a entirely different course and is and is not offered anywhere in this country the other programs which we have in the department is like btech mechatronics engineering btech mechanical engineering and and then phd and mtech program in several areas department has good research and other facilities we have some uh, very very uh, outstanding facility in terms of automotive sector like in house we have uh, wheel balancing wheel alignment dynamics uh, related labs all the engine uh, related laboratories we have and we uh, teach our students how to kind of modify uh, uh, the existing vehicles to the specification we have been participating in a lot of events like uh, baha supra uh formula go kart e kart e e cycle e vehicles also hybrid vehicles so this is like uh, a day in and day out uh function at uh, ups and students faculty the, we are all involved in uh, this kind of uh, hands on workshops uh, uh for for better understanding and learning of our students so this is a small brief about the department uh, i had lot of things to show but i am not uh sure if i have that kind of time uh just giving you some idea that how our students are actually doing some great innovations in terms of uh they they are offered some frugal research uh funded uh from the ups and therefore they are able to 
kind of try their ideas we have done a lot of product product development and design in the in house uh, at ups and and uh, students have gone to some of the great universities and doing their uh, pursuing their masters or phd programs in uh, different areas like mechatronics uh, materials uh, design uh, and, and different public sector units so so this is uh, this is a kind of in uh, day in and day out function at ups we we also have a very very innovative practice in terms of hr round tables automotive hr round tables so where the people from industry would come and uh, discuss a lot of things with uh, uh, ups and also give us some idea about where the uh, automotive industry is heading we have been a regular participant at auto expo so that's a kind of stimulus uh, 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 the students get they have been participating in some of the design conclaves and a lot of uh, uh, societal and extension activities also they do so so this element of uh, designing is is present uh, at uh, in the in the student of ups and and uh, we kind of uh, tend to or we kind of uh, wish to enrich that kind of experience uh through this particular interaction with uh, uh uh mr pratap bosh who is a, a known name in the area of automotive uh, design so uh, with that kind of small introduction uh, mr pratap bosh i would just like to kind of invite you to uh, to the session and uh, i would like you to maybe uh, briefly uh, introduce yourself and 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 uh, um share some things which you have done some of the projects which you have done with tata motors because i could see a lot of uh, revamping in tata motors we initially considered tata motors as uh, one of the giants in the area of commercial vehicle but suddenly we have seen a lot of facelift a lot of changes people started accepting the tata cars also uh, in all the segments uh, let it be hatchback or sedan there is a good amount of acceptance i see so uh, if you can share some of the project which you have done uh, and and the kind of um, uh, kind of things which are required as a designer uh, which which uh, which which stimulates you to to look at uh, uh, design in a different way so uh, uh, over to you mr pratap bose for uh, your introduction and uh, taking it on thank you thank you dr kumar thank you uh, dr joshi and everyone else uh, thanks also for that uh, very kind introduction to myself and your college I'm, i must admit i didn't know that uh, you had such a wide range of uh, courses on offer and uh, you know the the while you were speaking and introducing the seven or eight departments i think it's it's uh, it's very interesting to have that mix in a in a university because uh, you know as as you'll probably see and i I'd, i'd like to show your students and your faculty that the the world out there is very complex so yes you need to be specialized in your field of course but you must have an understanding or of everything else that there is uh, in within a business so uh, and that's how you can be a, a successful part of any any business uh, that's very very important the more you understand you know multidisciplinary uh you know effort that goes into creating a product or a service uh the better you know you will be able to uh, play your part in that story so um i'm not very <laughs> we don't use zoom uh, unfortunately or fortunately in the company uh we use team so i'm going to hopefully be able to share i uh how does it work so there's a share screen option you can see at the bottom side yes green color green color icon you can just click on that yeah and then it comes to entire screen application yeah yeah share the share the entire screen and okay. then you can click on your ppt maybe uh, yeah let me try that is this working yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. working it's working i can see that Okay so i think uh, you know i won't uh, take too much of the of time in the beginning let me go through the presentation um and then i think you know between the faculty and students you can ask any question so let's leave some some good amount of time for um, you know the question answers so i'll just start i think uh, 
you know, I think the topic that was given to me was, uh, you know, creating this future ready professional. I think uh, there's some, there are two very important uh, words in that. One is future ready or the future. And the second is professional. Uh, you know, when you come out of a university or college, uh, you have to hit the ground running and you have to be professional. And uh, so I'm glad that, you know, the topic itself uh, is very professional in that sense. Um, I just wanted to take some of you back to what what being a designer actually means uh, you know and the the role and the remit of a designer has changed dramatically over over the last uh, x number of years i think industrial design as a profession in india probably started in in the 60s and and uh, 70s uh, so in you know 30 40 years the role in india of course has has changed a lot the awareness and what a designer is expected to do. So I just wanted to sort of take you through that. Look, I think if you go back to the past, if you go back before the industrial uh, age, um, you know, the designer and the maker were actually the same person. So if you if you were living in, in, in settlement and you wanted a, a pot or you wanted a, a piece of carpentry or you wanted some footwear, you would go to the craftsperson and the craftsperson was a designer and the maker sorry i think there's some disturbance in the in the audio i don't know if uh, someone's not on mute or possible i'm getting some feedback yeah um so the designer was the maker so you went directly to the person who made and designed that product so if you like i said if you wanted a pair of shoes or some footwear you went to uh, you know the mochi and uh, that person would create and make uh, that object for you. As, you. as you go along, the designer stopped becoming the maker of that object itself, you know, because uh, there was something called the supply chain. And the supply chain is in itself a very, very complex uh, animal. Uh, you know, a car or any product is, a, is, is created by multiple, pro you know, individual smaller sub products coming together so in a car for example you almost have 30000 components each component is made by somebody is supplied by some some company uh, tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 and then it all comes together in this product called in our case an automobile uh, be it a car or a truck whatever it is so understanding the complexity of supply chain is important but what it also does is that the gap between a designer and the final customer has increased, you know, uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, a few hundred years ago where the designer, like I said, was the maker. So it was very easy to understand what your customer wanted, right? Because you spoke to the customer. Someone would say, I want a pot, which is this big or this small or tall or wide. How do you do that today? Because the customer is, is in another country, in another geography, uh, and, um, you know, that gap has increased. So I, 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 I think, you know, if you all are recording or if the students want to take a screenshot, this is actually a very important uh, image. I call it the, you know, the, the wheel of design. Um, you know, great design actually in that, in that uh, yellow octagon sits in the middle of, of some very, very complex uh, uh, things that influence design. One is, of course, designers have to be imaginative. I think if you don't have imagination, it's very hard to be a designer. Secondly, design is always influenced by society and culture. Technology, you know, what many of you are studying. Marketing, marketing is very, very fundamental to design, to get your product to the market. Supplier management and cost control. This is what I just spoke about. Utility and function. I mean, something that doesn't function well is actually cannot be called good design. Laws and legislation, a very, very important factor in shaping design. Uh, and of course, then the environment, environment in terms of, uh, you know, end of life, uh, life cycle management, materials that you use. So these eight factors, I think, are, are super important in creating a, a good piece of design. So if I take, maybe I've just e expanded on a couple of them, you know, uh, in marketing, for example, customization, uh, customizing and personalization is becoming a huge trend. People want their car or their phone or their motorbike to look unique from someone else's. Now, how do you do that? How do you do mass 
or how do you do customization at a mass scale? This itself is an opposing force. Uh, society and culture, we are seeing a lot of shared everything, you know, shared workspaces, shared uh, mobility, uh, shared living. Of course, this is pre-COVID, but it'll come back. Or maybe it'll come back in a different way. Uh, technology, a lot of people are talking about autonomous cars, uh, large-scale 3D printing. You know, so I keep always uh, this wheel on, on, on my uh, softboard wherever I go because uh, you have to look at any product you are designing through this lens. And believe me, sometimes these forces can be opposing forces. You know, legislation can be opposed to, to, to technology, for example. All of you know the BS6, you know, the BS6 legislation in India went from BS4 to BS6. But the technology that companies had was at BS4. So India is one of the only countries which went from BS6, BS4 to BS6 in one shot. So technology had to catch up with legislation, you know. So these are sometimes contrasting forces, but are very important in shaping good design. Um, you know, when I talk about Tata Motors and Tata Group itself, uh, and, and this is why I've highlighted the word future, like you all have also put future ready professional. Future is a part of our DNA in the company. Uh, anyone who knows anything about the Tata group, uh, you will see that, you know, some of the first, uh, let's say, business enterprises uh, in India and overseas were started by uh, the Tata group, you know, so be it the Taj Mahal Hotel in Bombay, you know, over 100 and 15 years ago, or the Tata Airlines, known as Air India today, or if even if you see JRD Tata's pilot license, you know, it, it's uh, one the first pilot's license, commercial pilot's license issued uh, in India under the British rule. So you can see that being pioneering and being future future ready or, or future focused is very, very important to us. And it should be to everybody, uh, especially if you're a student. So what does it take? One is vision. You have to be able to see ahead. You know, what others cannot see or visualize is the job of a, of a designer, actually to put, put a form, put a shape, put a idea into something that people can hold, touch, feel, uh, you know, distribute, manufacture. So the vision is is number one. Then is the courage. You know, you have to have the conviction in in doing what's right. Uh, you know, um, why would uh, the Tata start a five star hotel in 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 India in 1903? You know, why would we ever make the Nano? Why would we do so many things we do? Um, it's very important to have courage and conviction. The third is of course pioneering spirit. Uh, do it even if no one else has done it before and especially if no one else has done it before that's innovation how do you how do you take that leap of faith you know so that pioneering spirit is important when jrd flew from bombay to karachi in a tiger moth uh, you know carrying mail that was the first commercial flight in india uh, you know that really speaks about pioneering spirit there there was no gps there was no navigational aids, there were no airfields, in fact, you know, so should something have gone wrong along that flight, uh, he would have crashed in the middle of nowhere, you know. So he did it, especially because no one had done it. <laughs> and then, of course, culture, organizational culture, when when all of you, you know, in, in a few years graduate, uh, always choose a, a company that you want to work for, uh, not because of the money or because of the, you know, the the commercial aspects choose choose companies for their culture that really is something that you cannot buy uh, it must encourage and support you know innovation and design and and uh, and people like you and uh, you know to quote uh, you know of course star trek you have to go boldly where no one has gone before this is very important so a little bit now from Tata Group, let's say to Tata Motors Design. Where is Tata Motors Design based? Uh, you know, of course, uh, Dr. Joshi introduced it and, uh, and who is in that? So, of course, we are led by a corporate vision, which is to innovate mobility solutions with passion and to enhance the quality of life. That means whoever is, is involved with us as a customer, as, a, as an employee, as a partner, 
their quality of life must improve uh, with their association with Tata Motors. And of course, innovation and mobility solutions are the core to, to what we do. So Tata Motors design, we have uh, four studios, uh, three, of course, uh, within Tata Motors itself, one in uh, Coventry, one in Turin in Italy, and the third one is our main design studio in uh, Pune. And then for our commercial vehicles, we have uh, a company uh, called Tata Devu Commercial Vehicles, and we use uh, that design studio in some of our commercial vehicle projects. That picture you see on the right is actually the, the new uh, research and design center we opened in Coventry last November, uh, you know, before lockdown, etc. And uh, that's one of the most state of the art design centers anywhere in the world, actually. Uh, you know, it's got really a, the lot, a lot of the latest equipment, ex, you know, and, and technologies we've incorporated into that design center. But of course, all the technology is fine. You need the people. And, uh, you know, we are, we are for, you know, sort of for an Indian OEM, uh, we are the only global design network. Uh, you know, we have uh, roughly between 180 to 200 people at any given time from nine or 10 uh, nationalities. And, and this coming together of cultures, of experiences in the three studios makes our uh, uh, ability to deliver products, uh, you know, very, very uh, rich and exciting. Of course, each of the three studios can do end-to-end -end, uh, design, right from you know sketching to clay modeling to digital modeling to material selection, uh, you know material design. So we do it all in the entire range of of uh, disciplines. And and this is what I was saying earlier that having an interdisciplinary university is also very important because it mirrors the real world. And I think that's very good if if as students, you can mix with people from other, other departments and disciplines, and you can even work together on projects. There's nothing better than that, actually. So if the engineering guys and the design, you know, the design students can come together to create um, products, and then you know, your communications uh, team is able to create a campaign, you all will understand the end-to-end -end process of, of not only you know, concept design, but also realization and how you would market something like that in the future. So designing for India, this is a very complex question. A lot of my peers globally, you know, I keep in touch with from, you know, global OEMs. They have a very hard time designing for India because it's, uh, it's, it's very hard to define the Indian customer. We are a complex country. We are a large country. Um, you know, the geographic spread is so wide that, uh, you know, almost, almost, it's got almost a diversity and complexity of a continent, you know, that's why it's called a subcontinent. Um, you know, and over the years that, that I've been involved in design, uh, you know, everything about India has changed and is changing really rapidly, where and how India works, for example, this is a, this is a, a shared uh, office in Bombay uh, called Ministry of New, um, this was voted as one of the top 10 places to work in the world, you know, this, this facility. Um, you know, how and where India eats, all of you young students, uh, you know, you could be sitting in a restaurant uh, in Delhi or Bombay or, or in Dehradun, and uh, it could look like it's in New York or London or Paris, you know, there's no difference. Um, of course, huge push on infrastructure. These are the two biggest airports we have uh, in India, you know, New Delhi and Bombay. They're, they're very strong uh, symbols of, of a changing and modernizing India. Uh, what India shops for has changed. I used to remember, you know, uh, when I was a student, uh, we didn't have access to, to so many uh, goods and services. Uh, today, you know, at a click of a button on a mobile phone, uh, you can get anything delivered to you. Uh, and of course, the expression of India is much more confident uh, today than it ever was in the past. Uh, you know, it's a proud nation. And, and I think design, engineering, innovation is all reaching a point where we are able to express India as a, as a nation. You don't need to copy anyone. So I created, uh, you know, with, with my marketing uh, colleagues, sometimes they have, believe it or not, a little bit of confusion on what India is. So I created a film from the design team. And I'll try and show it to you. I don't know if the sound will work, but let me see. 
this is our vision from design on what india is and who, and who we are designing for so let me just play that I, I don't know. I hope you, I hope you could see that. Um, you know, so this this film uh, was very powerful uh, in the company itself. You know, and um, it was created by the by the design team, not by an agency or you know someone else. We we conceptualized it, we discussed it, we wrote it. So that's why you know being able to tell a story as a as a designer as as an innovator is very very important. And believe me, through your career, you know the better stories you can tell. Uh, the more people in your company and outside your company will understand where you're coming from. So after understanding a little bit about, you know, who our customer is, we follow a, quite a classic, uh, you know, design process in, in five steps. You know, we target, you know, how do we bring a solution uh, to a specific, uh, you know, requirement? So in this case, I'll show you, it's a commercial vehicle called the Intra. It has a thousand kilo uh, payload capacity. And we were bringing this for the first time to the market. Now, the first step is, of course, empathy, you know, get into the customer's shoes, really understand what drives him or her, you know, and this could be anyone, customer for a car, customer for a phone, any product or service, you know, really understand what drives that person. So uh, wh whenever we start a project, I send my design team out into the field, uh, you know, they don't sit in their air conditioned uh, offices, uh, in front of a Wacom tablet, I send them out and really to immerse themselves in the environment in which the product is going to be placed. So in this case, you know, I, I made them spend one month in the uh, in the bazaars and mandis and, uh, you know, food and flower markets in, in Maharashtra. We are, of course, you know, Pune based. So in Pune, Nasik, all of those, that area, they got out and they took hundreds and hundreds of photographs. All the photographs are by our team and they spoke to the user, they they rode with him or her, they went for delivery uh, runs, uh, they woke up at you know three o'clock in the morning uh, to go to the vegetable vendor, bring that to the market. So they did everything that the user would do and they spoke to them 
they literally became uh, you know that that driver uh, for one month those are the two designers in the middle uh, with one of our, our customers they also of course absorb a lot of the environment you know it's so mixed so chaotic uh, you know you have a massive truck and then you have a fruit you know vegetable vendor uh, you have dogs cats you name it you know all of you know so uh, sometimes i show this to students from you know foreign universities and uh, you know they find all of this really interesting but very hard to understand as you can imagine so but for all of you it's uh, it's daily life then we also study the accessories that people use in their products so we saw in this case for example a lot of people were using this sort of bull bar you know which is very unsafe for pedestrians by the way but the driver felt safe you know because the product doesn't have a nose and uh, they felt not having a nose is is uh, you know creates a um a feeling of vulnerability you know so they didn't tell us this uh, you know verbally it's from our observation so this is the point at which you have to really define what this customer wants and stated and unstated needs stated is what they will tell you but the unstated ones are actually the ones which are most most important so stated yes they'll tell you you know all the functional things are usually stated that we want a bottle holder our bottle bounces around while we are in the car you know the current old products have no phone charging facility they, uh, you know we feel hot there's no lockable storage uh, we can't listen to any music so those are the stated needs but the unstated needs are are actually what drove the design in this case it's a product called the intra i'll show it to you and the unstated needs were the need for respect the need for safety the need for status you know have you ever heard any any child in india saying that i want to grow up and become a truck driver they don't because no one considers you know driving a truck to be a a, a respectable profession and and we found that really uh, you know very moving actually you know if you took the trucks away in india small or large uh, we would all be on our knees uh, you know your your uh, amazon delivery still comes on a on a little truck uh, you know and uh, you know we felt that we have to as starter motors we have to like i said you know raise the quality of life it's in our mission statement so to give status then of course with all these inputs you have an ideation phase we create thousands of sketches i'm showing you you know few here but uh, this is where the skill and the talent of designers also comes into play uh, because they are able to visualize what other departments and other people in the company will not be able to visualize they can only specify but they cannot visualize uh, all of our engineering colleagues will say oh it needs to be this big this tall this high you know all the measurable stuff but uh, you know i ask them so how do you create a sensation of safety what's the measurement of that and they have no answer so you know it's very important to have this right brain left brain balance as a designer and uh, right from the first sketches we said look we are going to give hub caps we are going to give a nose to this product uh, to create that feeling that there's a crash zone and in fact there is a crash zone and we'll do more even in the interiors we brought in body color inside the the this vehicle why should it just be a dull boring place to work you know this poor uh, this poor truck um, you know mini truck driver is sitting in the middle of the traffic in the heat he has no air conditioning he's in a boring rickety noisy cabin he looks outside his window and there's someone sitting in a car you know with with all the comforts of a car so again you know we have a commercial vehicle design team and a passenger car design team we brought them all together for this project and lots of the passenger car designers started working on this program so they said why can't we bring some color to the interior why can't we bring air conditioning why can't we bring a music system so i was speaking earlier this is where we had a lot of argument and discussion with engineering product planning you know why do you need air conditioning so i said you need it because there's a human being sitting inside this vehicle and uh, you know we are about aspirations our tagline says connecting aspirations so if we don't do it as tata motors who will so we went ahead and did that so you have to have the right reason to make the right argument um with anyone inside and outside the company because they only see it as a cost but we see it as a there's a greater cost not to do it rather than the cost involved in doing something so this is the the final digital rendering you can see we had mobile phone charging spaces for two phones we brought in music system we brought in brought in air conditioning 
the bench that we gave also can double up as a as a bed to rest i think you would have seen in some of the previous photographs there was a guy lying there on two bucket seats which is very uncomfortable there's a lockable storage you know there's place for water so like i said all the stated and unstated needs we got a digital instrument cluster uh, why because it give gives a sense of status that's not a purely functional need you know that guy can tell his 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 uh, you know other drivers that look my truck has a digital uh, instrument cluster uh, yeah these are some of those things highlighted and then this is the the final 3d rendering of um, you know what that product was going to become like i said in this case the intra we gave hubcaps for the first time we we introduced hubcaps to a commercial vehicle uh, there's a nice large uh, grill in the front with a chrome you know bar um, with a very proud uh, tata logo so you know we wanted people to feel proud about about turning up in a vehicle like this you know when his son or daughter sees him uh, she or he should feel proud of his of his or her father um, and then of course you know we go into a clay modeling phase we use clay modeling very very extensively and then we bring in the same drivers that we met during our field research we actually bring them into the studio uh, and show them you know what we are doing take some feedback from them in this case for example they said we want larger headlamps uh, not only because it's uh, you know they feel that it's easier to see in the dark but they felt that it gave the the car the the vehicle a sense of you know modernity and pride uh, so we tweaked that a little and uh, yeah that was a product and as you as you go along like we said you know we design uh, all the commercial vehicles as well this was a sketch for the primer where we we brought in you know daylight running lamps a, a very very useful cabin um this is the interior it's like a workspace so this is our top of the range truck so what i showed you the intra is like you know at one end and then the primer is at the other end then uh, we of course do vans this is the winger so you can see the skill talent ability of of the designers at tara motors again here in the interior we brought in a lot of passenger car like features like this tablet you know uh, for the infotainment uh, we of course do electric vehicles right from the small uh, iris that you see for three people to uh, you know the ev buses for for city for city use uh, you know carries up to 60 people so that was commercial vehicles passenger vehicles we follow a very similar uh, approach of course the customer is a little better defined uh, for us most of us understand who buys a, a passenger car um, when I joined the company, this is kind of where we were. You know, we had many products, all very pioneering, but we didn't renew them as fast as India was changing. So I showed you the, the, the picture of India, the, how the aspirations changed because of the, the demographics. India is the youngest country in the world. I think 65% of our population is under the age of 30. So they want a very different vehicle. And we were losing that that battle if i can put it that way you know with our products when i joined the company in 2007 we had you know sort of manza vista good products you know functionally mechanically but they didn't uh, fulfill aspirational needs for the customer many of them became taxis so the company started to be known as a taxi company and no one wants to buy a personal car which is actually also used by taxis so we had to do a real brand uh, reinvention through design so the, the one of the first cars I did was uh, a vision for a hatchback called the 45X. Uh, this brought in really what I call impact design. Impact design, what does that mean? It means you have immediate impact when you, when you look at the product, but then when you experience the product through your ownership process, it, it creates a lasting impact. It's very important, um, you know, for students especially, you have to be whatever product or service you are in, in any se sector, airlines, uh, mobile phones, uh, food delivery, any business has got to be in the top two or three in the customer's mind for co in the consideration set. If you're the fourth one, you won't even be considered. So I had to find a way that through design, our products came into the top two or three in people's minds. You know, we got into the dinner table conversation because our previous products had fallen out of the consideration set so whatever we were mechanically doing and engines and all of that was fine but no one was coming to the showroom because the products didn't attract them 
So impact design was the philosophy I created where we had to create uh, impact through the visual. Then the people went to the showroom because they were interested in the product. It looked amazing. And then you discovered all its mechanical and other benefits. So this was the, the, the product we designed. Uh, it was very successful. We showed it in the 2018 uh, Delhi Auto Show. In fact, this was one of the, the first projects we did in the, in the new UK studio. Uh, very, very dramatic, but very clean, very beautiful car. Um, interiors also brought in some some great touches in terms of form shape material you know we really had to elevate the brand to another level and um, yeah this is the car all of you know i hope at least altros we launched it last february just before lockdown and today it's uh, it plays in a very a very very competitive premium hatchback uh, segment which is dominated by you know uh, suzuki and hyundai and Altros already now is uh, is in that top three. You know there are other players. There's Honda. There's uh, Toyota, of course. Uh, but Altros today sells almost uh, ten thousand units a month. So from zero to we, because we didn't have a product to ten thousand in in less than one year a month. Uh, so you can see the way we design the car. It looks low. It looks long. It looks very strong because of the wheel arches. I pushed for getting bigger wheels on the car. You know, the wheels are the shoes of the car. This is another point of discussion between our engineering team and us. And uh, but if you keep the customer uh, in focus, then even the engineers try everything to to help you achieve this. I didn't want the the second door handle to to be on the skin, for example. I wanted the car to look like a two door coupe. So we put the door handle uh, on the on the C pillar. Uh, like I said, the wheels are, are sort of largest in its segment. So we did a lot of things uh, where we uh, used our engineering uh, colleagues. You know, we really pushed our engineering colleagues to help us achieve this. And I must say they did a phenomenal job. So if you look at the tunnel, I know I can't point, but if you look at the tunnel at the back, uh, most European or Japanese cars, this tunnel will be very high. And so it's very difficult to sit in the middle seat of, of a hatchback. Uh, only a child usually sits there. So here again, we push that tunnel completely. It's only probably 35 millimeters high. It's almost flat. So this becomes a true five seater for India. You know, So there's that difference between how a European company approaches a, a product for India and how we approach uh, design for India. Uh, there you can see both the cars, the, the Vision car and, and of course the, the Altros. This is another feature which I want to really highlight for our engineering students. You know, in India, we wear dhoti, sari, salwar kameez. Uh, we also have an elderly population. Sometimes access in and out of a car is very difficult, especially in low cars like hatchbacks. So, you know, the design team's idea was that can the doors open all the way to 90 degrees? And of course, in stages, because when the door opens wider, you have much easier access in and out of a car. And uh, here, the hinging became a huge challenge, the hinges for, for the doors. And uh, again, I must say, you know, this, this, this uh, combination of, 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 of a design vision and uh, engineering uh, let's say effort and execution really made these uh, doors happen. And we call this the wing 90 sort of albatross doors. Uh, fantastic piece. It's a small intervention. You know, it's only a hinge, but no one does this in the world. And again, that comes from a deep understanding of how Indians are, what we expect, and then how design and engineering comes together to deliver this solution. So anytime you see an altros next time, <laughs> Please go and open, open the doors. Uh, so this is what you know. Sort of we've done in the last five or six years. You can see an entire range of concept cars which feed into the production cars above. Uh, so we've been very very busy, and these are just the the passenger cars. Like I said, just a little bit of a zoom in. So you can see the the impact design started in 2016 with Tiago, and then you know goes all the way till today. We just launched the Safari. Uh, you know, less than two weeks ago um, in India, and of course, all the products in between. So, so design has had a real role in in shifting the mentality and image of the of the company. Uh, but of course, always always supported by great engineering. Uh, 
And these are some of the concept cars which we did, which always feed into our uh, you know, production program. So today we have the youngest range of, of cars in the, in the Indian market. Uh, you know, all of our cars are less than just about 12 months old in that sense as an entire range. But of course, the future you will say is electric and I agree and we agree. So uh, I was asked a couple of years ago to create a vision of what a electric car from, from Tata Motors could look like. And this came from the chairman's office. So we, uh, we worked on that project uh, and we, we created this product. It was called the E-Vision, vision because it's a vision. It's not uh, you know, meant for production, but it really showcased what Tata Motors design and engineering and technology can create. And I think, yeah, there's the interior again, very, very sophisticated, very advanced. Uh, again, for, for the people who are doing HMI and UX design, you know, sometimes the biggest screen is not the best solution. Um, you know, you have to understand this, this when information is needed and when it's not. I'll show you, I hope this film plays. This is again a film I created with the team to, to, to show to the world when we want to. Yeah, so we showed that in uh, in 2018. It was a, it was our 20th year, and then of course these are the products that actually people uh, can buy. The Altros will launch EV will launch soon, but the Nexon EV is already in the market. It has uh, close to 80 percent market share. We sold more than 3,000 cars in one year, which we never expected. So it's a great product, and uh, you know it's become like a benchmark for uh, EVs in India. Then we did another small, uh, you know, a small SUV. It's called the H2X. Uh, that that pre previews a product we are going to launch this year, uh, this calendar year. I can't tell you the month, but it's it's a it's a little product called the Hornbill. That's the code name. Uh, it's a small SUV, 3.8 meters only, but uh, has a real big presence, you know, and and that's very important. So again. Here we worked with our uh, HVAC team and they came up with these Coanda vents. Uh, Coanda vents are, are similar to um, what Dyson uses for its fans and its uh, hair dryers. Uh, you know, there's no blades, uh, there's no moving parts really. And uh, we incorporated that into this concept. Let me see if this film plays.
So, you know, we were talking about communicating our stories. Uh, so all these films that I'm showing you is actually made by uh, conceptualized and filmed and made by our design team. Uh, in all three studios, we use the visualization team and we create these films. And sometimes, you know, we show it for a, for a car launch. Sometimes it's for a auto show. Sometimes I take it to a, a dealership uh, meet, you know, global dealership meet where we want to excite the dealers of what's coming next. So this film, for example, I showed there uh, first before we went to the auto show. Another another great car is Sierra. A lot of you know about Sierra. Uh, it was an inspirational product in its time. And we wanted to bring it back with a, with a new architecture, uh, a new philosophy. So we called it Sierra for the new era. And again, you can see the, the visualization sketches, the quality of, of how designers are able to translate an idea into the head onto, onto paper is very important. Uh, don't forget, you know, the management takes decisions which are worth, you know, hundreds of crores on a, on a product. Uh, and they take that decision based on sketches and models, not on the final car because you know, it's too late then. So the, the better your visualization and your storytelling is, uh, the more chance you have uh, for management to pick your, your uh, you know, your project to, to take forward. So this is the concept. That's the concept car, which we, we created and built. The interior, we took all the screens away. In fact, it was just a bring your own device concept. So you can see there's no screens there. The idea was you would come in with your phone or your tablet or whatever it was and plug it in and that would become your instrument cluster. And uh, yeah, there you are. The result of all of that is, of course, you know, we we have the highest sales we've ever had in, in the passenger car business. I think last February or this February uh, last month, we sold, uh, you know, the highest number of cars we've ever sold in, in almost 10 or 11 years. And uh, this is because we put the customer at the center and, and we really create products that people fall in love with, you know, this lasting impact. So immediate impact is fine, but it has to create lasting impact. And you can see from these photographs, people send us, you know, there's men, women, old, young, every type of customer. They've gone to every type of place you can imagine in India, in the mountains, in the beaches, in the hills. Um, so the appeal of our products has really become wide. And like I was telling you earlier, mind share is, is what leads to market share. So if you are a college like UPES, are you in the top? three colleges that people think about when they think about engineering or design. If you are a student and your portfolio comes to, to, to my desk, uh, do I put you in the top three of the portfolios that have reached me, you know, of the hundreds that reach me? So if you must be in that top two or three, I can't think of any service or product where number four is, 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 is strong. So, so forget about that. If you're not on the podium, you're not winning. And, you know, this is this is a picture I always like to end with someone actually kissing a car. You know, you if you think of the inanimate objects that you kiss, <laughs> you know, uh, there aren't so many, you know, you don't kiss your phone or you don't kiss your computer mouse, you know, but the car is uh, that this sort of emotional product that uh, someone, you know, bends down to kiss that. 
So I think with that, you know, I'll, I'll stop. I hope you all were able to see and and hear. Was that okay? Uh, uh, that was wonderful, Mr. Pratap. I think I have uh, less words to explain, but the way you presented, it was amazing. In fact, this has uh, kind of created a lot of things in my mind. And I'm thinking uh, about uh, becoming a designer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I should do some formal course on design because this is something really amazing. <laughs> I had a question or two, uh, uh, Mr. Bose, for you. Because uh, a lot of dictation now I, I see, because the way you were presenting, I see that there was a lot of dictation uh, from a designer to the engineer uh, uh coming nowadays huh? so so one thing i was just um, wondering if if uh, in your philosophy and in the in the career growth also uh, should that be considered that uh, is there any uh, uh, kind of uh, order we we set up for example uh, the designer first and then the functional team comes in or the functionality first and then designer comes in because that's one question which goes into the mind of every student uh, who is pursuing engineering or a, a student who is first pursuing his design course. So, so because there, I have seen uh, this kind of uh, uh, things going in the mind that I also need to understand the functional aspect to the extent of an engineer uh, when, when I'm kind of uh, designing a product. So, I would just like your view on that particular uh, matter because it has to match uh, to to be in sync. Uh, and, and perform uh, the way you uh, expect it to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but first it must come from understanding the customer. I think both engineering engineers and designers must, must understand who that final customer is. Uh, it's not about measurements and specifications and all of that. You know, anyone can match any specification you can think of. So today, if you have a look, you know, most hatchbacks have a 1.2 liter uh, petrol engine. You know, there's only so much you can do with that. You know, so technology after a point does not become a differentiating factor. Absolutely. You know, it, it is a must have, you must have it. Your engine or your suspension or whatever it is must be at least as good as, as the competition. Uh, in no way can it be worse, but it's not the only thing anymore. And I'll give, like I said, that little example of what I gave of the door hinge on the Altros. That came from our understanding of, of the ingress egress situation uh, in India. A lot of older uh, people in India, a lot of women with saris, a lot of men with dhotis. We saw they were really struggling to get out of uh, one of these Japanese, Korean, or European hatchbacks, you know, because we did that same field study. They said it's so difficult to get in and out of these cars. Uh, you know, the, and we realized that it was actually the door. If the door opened more, we would, and we took, we took some films and we showed that to the engineers and said, look, this door, this door must open more. You find a way to do it. And when you set engineers, that sort of challenge I, I've seen that they are always, because of the pride of, of what they do, they always try and find you a solution. And they found right. us that solution. It's a unique global solution. There's no hinge like that in the automotive industry. And, uh, and they are so proud when they see that you know the photographs that people send us with the doors open and they call the altros you no, know, that's they call ab it the absolutely amazing absolutely amazing so we drive them so you know yeah. there you have to start somewhere but fundamental is what you are doing it for and who you are doing it for if you get that wrong and if you don't have that understanding as a company or as a college or as a as a group of departments then you are really struggling then it becomes a you know us versus them uh, the point is you you know you have to <laughs> You have to work together to create that solution which matches a vision. So the vision is important first. So so what I get is uh, the the customer, the purpose, followed yeah. by the designers yeah. and engineers coming to play together. their roles. Uh, Mr. Pratap, just one more question from my side, and then uh, maybe we'll take some from the audience. Uh, I have seen, this is my experience, that uh, most of the beautiful designs and efficient designs uh, are not so cheap. Uh, they, they also come with a lot of cost. So, but I've seen with Tata Motors, uh, the cars which you have designed, they look amazing. I mean, uh, aesthetics, 
and and uh, the kind of uh, surface finish and those things which are coming up uh, those are amazing but uh, cost wise you have been able to keep it uh, under a particular level uh, how do you i mean see this this particular aspect because otherwise so, you know, it comes very costly yeah cost is actually a function of uh, volume you know so the more cars you sell the the less the cost per car is and uh, you know we find some very clever solutions uh, around that so you know for example dr kumar anything that a customer will see or touch or feel we don't compromise you know so if it's something in what we call we have split the cars into zones so we have a a zone b zone and a c zone in the interior for example so in the c zone you would not use the same materials and finishes that you would use in a zone you know so to be able to prioritize which zone is important to a customer is fundamental so if you're talking about something which is below the seat and that the customer never sees feels touches there you can have a different approach but if you're talking about the steering wheel if you're talking about the instrument panel the doors the seats you know what the customer is directly touching and seeing and interacting with there we don't compromise so so this balance is very important and then we've seen that as the volumes grow the cost per unit comes down actually and uh, the bigger cost is the, the the cost of doing it badly because uh, you know if you do it badly you lost that entire 7 8 900 crore investment i mean a new car costs around 900 crores to develop uh, which is a huge amount of money if you can imagine so there's a lot of responsibility uh, to get that product right and we've seen that earlier it used to be value for money now people are paying money for value so if they see value they pay you the money so one one more question which comes just uh, out of this uh, uh, thing which you said how much time actually it takes for your team to come out with a entire new design if you i mean is it uh, you need some kind of stimulus or uh, sometime it is very fast sometime it is very uh, long time uh, is there any uh, time constraint on that of course we we Uh, we have now reduced our uh, sheet of paper to sheet metal what i call sheet of paper to sheet metal that process is uh, around 40 months uh, and the design time in that is between 16 to 18 months the rest is tooling validation all of that so with, within 16 months we we go from uh, a blank sheet of paper to a final signed off class a release so about 16 months is our timeline so can we have some questions yeah. from you have we have okay no yeah for what so there are some questions from some of the participant are these design compiled into place by robots or done manually by human uh i didn't get the question i mean of course in the manufacturing we use a lot of robots in in the yeah. welding process in the weld shop yeah. especially that's completely robotized but then the final assembly is is obviously done yeah. by yeah so so one of the participant is asking is tata magic iris uh, safe to travel <laughs> uh, yeah i mean uh, you know the the in fact the, the safety uh, consideration let me tell you when 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 the product planners were conceiving that product they wanted to make a three wheeler actually okay and uh, and we said no three wheelers are, are inherently unsafe so first of all we made it into a four wheeler and uh, you know coming to your question of cost and everything so the four wheel was very very important for us as a company and then as we so we already exceeded any uh, protocol that there was for safety and now as protocols come and all of you know we are actually ahead of of yes. most indian protocols yeah so yes, so safe yes. so most of the tata cars are now rating four and above i, I see four they have done a lot in that particular area yeah so uh, the magic uh, one, going to that specific question the magic was going supposed to be a three wheeler because that was a competition set we said no we will do a four wheeler and and that's what we went and did right so one more question uh, is from mr shubham singh is asking what is the difference between ui and ux designer oh very simple so so ui is the interface itself and yeah. ux is everything the experience uh, 
uh, you know, the experience for the interface. So U, UI and UX, a lot of people ask that question, you know, so what, what is the difference? But the, the difference is actually very clear. The experience is how you want the customer to feel about interacting with something. So, you know, so for example, in our car, the UX part, the experience part is I said to our HMI designers that I don't want the customer to go through more than two levels maximum to change something. So for example, if they want to choose music, within two levels they should be able to change the music not more because if imagine if you're driving at a at 80 kilometers per hour on a on an expressway uh, every second you take your eyes off the road you have traveled hundreds of meters yes. so so that was the ux that i wanted right. the, the 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 interface itself is the color the size the position the font you know where those buttons will be how we how we distribute the the functionality on a screen you know that's the actual interface design so that's the difference ux is is your your strategy for for hmi and ui is actually what it looks like right right uh, plus there are a lot of uh, great comments for you uh, one fellow is saying that uh, you have touched him emotionally and he wants to become a designer i hope he buys a tata car first <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, he is, uh, I think, ambi uh, ambitions are now boosted up as a designer. Uh, he always dreamed to be a part of uh, Tata Motors. Uh, Great. Uh, and some some students are asking uh, about possibilities of getting a career in Tata Motors and as a design engineer. So what should they do to become design engineers? So that's one question which is coming from their side. I think design engineers is is very different to how we look at you know what we call these you know uh, creative designers. So it's two separate sort of uh, streams into the company. If you want to do if you want to be a design engineer, you'll have to approach through the engineering stream uh, in the company. And I think on the Tata Motors website, you know, continuously there's updates on on positions and roles available. Uh, we in design hire, of course, from design colleges with, with design degrees, and we offer a one year, what we call uh, internship that leads to a job. So currently we have three people like that in our Pune studio who are, who are just about finishing their one year post graduation, uh, after graduation, basically. And we were to mention, uh, uh, Mr. Pratap, just to mention, uh, our uh, school of design has uh, uh, the head, uh, I think Dean, Dean School of uh, Design is also from Tata Motors. Uh, uh, Mish Mo Manisha Mohan, I, I, I think uh, she's also one of your seniors. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's also heading the School of Design at UPES. Yeah. She's doing wonderful in that, in some of the areas, she is doing wonderful. That's right. That's right. There's a lot of praise I see uh, students are writing uh, about you and the radar motors uh, in, in their comments that's nice <laughs> yeah so so then would you like to say yeah, something so, before uh, we so, uh, Pratap, uh, as you mentioned about the tata new concept mini suv mm -hmm. yes i can't hear you i can't hear you yeah uh, so, uh, hello yeah, new mini suv yeah yeah so uh, can you just give some kind of uh highlights that to what's the exactly this uh car is uh mini suv yeah so this will be the speciality actually, in this so this is actually a very very small footprint it's only three it's only uh, yeah, so this this hornbill, as we call it uh, internally, it's uh, it's it's only three point eight meters, uh, so it's a very very compact. It's smaller than a Tiago actually. So for the first time, we are going to bring a product like that to the Indian market, which is a true SUV, but in that size. Um, see, SUVs are the fastest growing segment uh, or body type globally, not just in India, but globally. And, uh, you know, the, the decline of the sedan has been, you know, sort of created by the growth of the SUV. 
and we felt that SUVs are only available at you know 10 lakhs, 12 lakhs, 15, 20 lakhs. Uh, you know, there was nothing in that, you know, let's say five to eight lakh or five to seven lakh category. And uh, so this is one of the segments we are going to create actually. You know, we are we are we are going to create that segment in India soon this year. So please watch out for it. It's going to be a, a absolutely fantastic product. Okay. We expect near about uh, Diwali product. <laughs> that I can't say, but hopefully there will be some big dhamakas. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, that's the only thing from my end. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Mr. Pratap, it was it was wonderful to have you uh, in this in this particular program. I'm I'm really delighted. Uh, just to I mean, uh, bother you a little more, uh, we are looking for some great people like you in our uh, advisory committee. So I, I mean, and this is a inquiry I'm making. If you can please uh, uh, join uh, U, uh, UPS School of Engineering uh, in one of the uh, advisory committee also. So because because we have seen some some we are getting very very insightful things from your side, and it will be great if you can be a part of that. So sure, if I think if you all can just drop me a line on that, uh, you know, uh, on my email, I'll, I'll definitely consider for sure. Yeah. yeah. Just to be able to, to be able to give it the right amount of, you know, time uh, is is the problem. <laughs> yes. So uh, not just drop, drop yeah, me, so not uh, to uh, bother you much more on this thing. Uh, it was uh, wonderful talking to you on this session, and it was uh, completely our pleasure to have you at. Uh, UPS, uh, we, we are we are very much looking forward to have you in campus. If you can just uh, uh, spare some time, uh, we will yes. be looking forward to your visit to UPS campus, and uh, we will be delighted to host you uh, uh, in some of the events if you have time. So, Absolutely. with those uh, words, I would like to thank you once again from uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering School of Design and UPS uh, School of Engineering. I would like to thank you and uh, thank you for the time which you have spared. It was really no. a wonderful session. Thank uh, you. You know, thank you. It's been a real, real pleasure for me. You know, um, as you know, I love to meet people face to face and, uh, you know, to, to see and present to, uh, to students and faculty, you know, really face to face. So I'm sure, you know, when things open up, uh, we'll get that opportunity. I would love to come there. The, the first picture you showed, the campus looks amazing, you know, in the hills. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just forgot to tell you that. Uh, this is in the foothill of Himalayas, and uh, the place is called uh, Bidholi. And um, uh, just to give you a mention, uh, mm -hmm. it is said that uh, Lord Buddha actually passed this place and stayed here for some time, and that is why it is called Bidholi absolutely green uh, in the foothill of uh, himalayas and uh, I mean, you would love to be part of this place uh, if you <laughs> happen to come absolutely. You, absolutely. I, i'll be i'll be delighted to come so so thank you again for uh, you know the effort you all put in as well uh, and uh, i hope it was useful for you and your students no, no, it was amazing 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 thank you thank, thank you very thank much thank you thank you yeah. take care please thank you. take take care. thank you Can we pick up a